Hey cats, it's Ed at Seattle Bud here. I have a look for you at a new model from Brooks today. This is the Ghost Max 2. I enjoyed the firm but fair Ghost Max original back in 2023, but how does this new and improved version hold up this year? Let's dive in. Thanks for joining me on the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already and give this video a thumbs up like. Also drop us a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Danke schön. This is a shoe that Brooks have sent over to me for review, but they're not paying me to make this video, nor will they get to vet my views before my valued viewers get to see them. 42 millimeters of heel stack here in my size of the Ghost Max 2 with about 36 millimeters up front. So that makes for an approximate six mil drop, which is exactly what Brooks have stated on their website for the sample size. The Ghost Max 2 though is on the heavier side of life in terms of my UK 11 or US 12. I've got about 359 grams here, which is about 12.7 ounces. So it's not outside the ballpark of what we had in last year's Ghost Max original, though I think the weight of this one does very much place it into a specific running shoe category. In terms of the midsole, we have a new version of Brooks's DNA loft material here. I think this is supposed to be like a version three of that material, and it, in fairness, is a little bit softer than last year. It's not pure squash. I guess more of a Nova Blast like approach here. It has a sure A durometer score of about 29, which is just a little bit firmer than average. Four foot width at the widest point here, we got 12.2 centimeters. And I've got about 10.5 here at the widest point of the heel. These are out now, they cost 145 pounds here in the UK. So it's a little bit more expensive than last year's Ghost Max model. We'll start with the upper first. So upper wise, certainly the Ghost Ghost Max 2 is on the plush side when you consider the tongue and some of the padding around the heel and Achilles. The tongue is non-gusseted, meaning that there is no extra material that kind of stretches down and underneath the insole here. It's not stitched in or anything, so the tongue is free to move around. There is a lace loop here on top of the tongue to help keep it in position. I didn't find that it slid around all that much. Laces here are the big, chunky, thick variety that I always sort of associate with a Nike Dunk SB model. They are big, they're thick, there's quite a bit of stretch to them as well. And they do require a fair bit of cinching to actually secure that pillow-like tongue down on top of the foot. There's a couple of overlays either side on the lateral and medial sides here, and quite a considerable one back here in the heel. The actual heel counter is very rigid, it's very thick. This absolutely says plush recovery, easy day for me. I don't really think the upper's built for any extreme speed whatsoever. Quite a lot of padding as well to absorb water, which has been a bit of a problem, which is actually why I've reviewed this shoe like a few weeks down the line. It does tend to soak up a lot of water, so if you're going to be running in a very wet climate, like the UK for example, then just bear that in mind. I did have to pull the laces in quite a bit to secure my sort of normal to narrow width foot, and this is the normal version of the Ghost Max 2 as well. There's also a wide and extra wide, so like a 2E and a 4E in the black version of the shoe. So if you do need that, there is one out there, but yeah, this 1D version, it's still pretty wide. Oddly, on Brooks' own website, they suggest that you need to go up a full size in this shoe. I would suggest that is not what I found at all. I think you probably need to go maybe a half size down even. I think you'd probably be okay true to size if you've got like a normal width foot. But yeah, don't go a half or full size up. That's just crazy stuff. Overall, the shoe does feel quite voluminous in the toe box. And I just don't feel that I need all these plush elements here in the upper. Just feels a bit like overkill. I mean, that might be exactly what you need if you're a heavier built runner, perhaps if you've got a much wider foot than normal, you want that extra generous toe box. Comfortable enough, but the upper is adding some significant weight for me at least, and it's not as elegant looking as the Glycerin Max. I'll give it a 2.6 out of three for the upper. 
Mitsol wise, very much the same sort of feelings as I had in the Ghost Max original. It's certainly firmer than the now flagship Glycerin Max, which is super soft, or perhaps even firmer than the Mag Max Nitro from Puma. It's certainly in that easy to recovery day category though, it cannot escape that. Not something I felt that I wanted to turn up the pace in, mainly due to the weighty nature of the upper materials that we've got. And also this very significant sort of four foot rocker that we've got here, the shoe is really quite rigid as well. There's no plates or anything embedded into the midsole. I think it's down to the midsole material itself and the quite generous rubber that we've got on the outsole. It does feel like one of those shoes where Brooks certainly want you to engage the whole underside of the shoe, landing sort of mid to forefoot. It feels like you're just removing the whole intention of it, really. In fact, that's the case for a lot of these Max Cushion offerings. They're kind of saying, yeah, get the maximum cushion here. But if it's like too quicksand-like, like forgiving and sort of absorbent, what's the point of even having all of this midsole foam here and not landing in it? It's kind of like owning a Volvo estate but never filling up the back of it. The side walls are a little bit deceiving here as well. The shoe isn't perhaps quite as tall as it appears, but they do provide a little bit of stability. Not that it's all that needed here in the midsole of the Ghost Max 2. They just creep up and around the foot a little bit just to add in like a sort of helping hand. Don't expect Zumax like squash here from the DNA loft material. I think it's a more subtle use of the term Max. It's a forgiving material, I suppose, but with the very significant width to the forefoot bed and that sudden drop off in the forefoot area, it makes for quite an odd kind of feel really. One that made me want to increase my cadence more than anything else. I think top use for this one is certainly for easy to recovery type pace. I guess you could also use it as a quite good walking shoe as well, though the nature of the foam here is no doubt going to appeal to the more heavier built runners after a sort of resilient cushion with consistency as well, without it being too squashy and unstable. That rigid, plateless midsole material really does provide a nice stable feel. And perhaps if you're after a more traditional sort of running shoe upper feel, then this one could be right up your street. For me, the midsole though is perhaps a little bit too niche to make it an absolute recommendation. The Glycerin Max 2 really does all this does, but better, especially when we have a super versatile shoe like the Hyperion Max already around this price point in the Brooks lineup. I'll give it a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole so far. Outsole wise, the shoe performed great on dry roads and pavement, but I have to say it did feel less than assured when I got to some wet sort of surfaces. Concrete and tarmac, it really didn't feel like it was as defined or as assured, certainly on toe off, and again that led me back to a sort of easier recovery pace again for fear of slipping. When compared to the Glycerin Max, that's got a lot more ridges, the rubber's a bit more malleable, the flatter design here just doesn't seem to work all that well when you hit some wet concrete. Not sure what the rubber's made of, the thickness is certainly here, that's for sure, there's some good depth to it, but it just doesn't seem to cut it as well as the Glycerin Max design does. There's three sections kind of decoupled here in the heel, this forefoot section's quite thick, and it does actually increase that rigidity that we find in the midsole. As such, just a bit of a miss for me. It's reasonably easy to clean, but if you need some decent multi-weather traction, then the Ghost Max 2 just didn't quite hit the spot. Just need more ridges here, especially considering the depth of the rubber that we've got. In the dry, it was absolutely fine, but certainly here in the UK at the moment, you cannot put your money on it. You never know what it's going to do out there. I'll give it a 2.5 out of 3 for the outsole after my initial runs. Value now. At least the shoe, I guess, is coming in at a more reasonable price for a running shoe. 145 quid here in the UK. It's round about the same as something like the Infinity Run from Nike. More affordable than the pair of shoes we have from Asics that are in the ballpark, the Kano and the Nimbus. Up against something like the Super Blast 2, there's a massive weight difference of about 60 grams in favour of that Asics shoe. So that one really is still the outlier in terms of sort of max cushion and weight. I think if you're a fan of the original Ghost Max, and you're probably going to like this one. It's a little bit softer than before. They haven't strayed too far from that design and that might be brilliant for you. In fact, sometimes we're very quick to tell a brand that they've moved too far from what we liked before. The rest of the Brooks lineup has shifted quite significantly since last year. 
if you think the Hyperion Max from last year has now become the Hyperion. The Hyperion Max 2 is now a big uplift from what we had in the Hyperion Max and the Glycerin Max brings the significant squash and cushion. So the Ghost Max 2 does still fit into that lineup here where you don't want the significant like instability I suppose. You want something that's reliable at a more reasonable price. You don't want super quicksand underneath your foot. You want something that's going to just get you through those easy miles. But I think it might lack the wow factor that many people expect in a running shoe these days. Also due to the bulk of the upper materials and the weight I think it's going to put a few perhaps more narrow footed leaner runners off. I'll give it a 2.6 out of 3 for value. Okay, if I've totaled the scores up correctly, for the Brooks Ghost Max 2, we got a 10.3 out of 12. It's a well-built shoe. It just feels like it's a little bit too hefty for me to want to use on an easy day. It's very plush and I think a lot of the heavier built runners are going to get more out of this one than me. Are you a fan of the Ghost Max 2? What is your favourite Max cushioned shoe right now in your rotation? Let me know down in the comments. Musical interlude for you. Today from Jay Maskis, he released an album earlier this year that I missed completely. It's called What Do We Do Now? Really loving the guitar sounds on this one and some of the urgency in Jay Maskis' guitar playing too. It does sound like another album that he's made like in his house or something and I think that adds a certain awesome character and flavour to the material. Really like the intro track, Can't Believe We're Here, is a soaring guitar solo with lots of fuzz on it later on in the song. And I like the nice open sort of production that we've got. It sounds quite intimate, like you're just sat in the room listening to him playing the track. Also like the introduction of some piano and other instruments into some of his material. Really does give it a new kind of feel and flavour. I know he uses a vast array of different electric guitars to get different tones and sounds sounds and that's very apparent across the whole album. Very much recommended Jay Maskis with What Do We Do Now? Thanks for tuning in people, hope you enjoyed today's Ghost Max 2 review. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Also drop us a comment to help with the algorithm. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.